The Moyne Thrust Belt is a major tectonic boundary in northwest Scotland, the edge of a zone of mountain building some 430 million years ago. Generations of geologists have visited, worked and been trained on this ground since its discovery in the later part of the 19th century. Almost all of them have been drawn to its famous locations in the north, around the Ascent district. But actually, some of its most stunning structures are to be found further south, between Glen Torridon and Strathcarron. The area contains several Munro's major hills. The hills are made of strips of two main rock types, brown sandstones, part of the Torridon group, the Applecross formation, along with younger Cambrian quartz sandstones, or quartzites, that form prominent white streaks in the landscape, which makes mapping out the geology rather straightforward, as the rocks are really distinctive. The challenge, though, is to understand how this stripy map pattern, the alternations of Torridon group sandstones and Cambrian quartz sites, formed. This is Torridon, its famous peaks disappearing up into the clouds. But we're going to be looking at the geology between Torridon and Strathcarron towards the southeast, up in that cloudy ground up there. But fear not, the sun always shines on the Moyne Thrust Belt. The hills were visited by two of the main protagonists in the arguments of the mid 19th century about Scottish geology, known as the Highlands Controversy. They were young Archibald Geeky, who would go on to become the Director General of the Geological Survey and indeed President of the Royal Society. And James Nicholl, then Professor of Geology at Aberdeen. And they had radically different views of how the Highlands were structured. For Geeky, following the ideas of his then boss, Roderick Impey Murchison, the rocks of the Northern Highlands formed a continuous stratigraphic succession, getting progressively younger from west to east. Nicol, on the other hand, thought that the assembly of rocks was put together by tectonics, by faulting. So both Nicol and Geeky came here in the late 1850s, 1860, and worked that ground. Let's look at their cross sections. We can start with Nicol's section, which has east on the right. It's easier if we add some colour, with quartzites in grey and the older Torridon sandstones in brown. The two rocks are folded and faulted together, although with rather curious arrangements. By way of contrast, this is Geeky's section from his field notebook, this time with East on the left. He has less interpretation than Nickel shows, but notes the repeated faulting together of the two units. His unit one is the Torridon sandstones, and two are the quartzites. So both recognise faulting, but for Geeky it was a sideshow. For Nickel, it was the main event. Well, this looks like a good place to sit down and get the view in. So I'm gonna make a sketch. So let's start off with a silhouette, picking out some of these things through here, the various hillside profiles, and we can orient it with bearings, and then add the geology we see on that hillside, going up through there, we're using yellow for the quartzites, or the quartz sandstones, and brown for the Torridon group rocks. And we could pick it out right there across. We can pick out this high level piece of quartz sandstone, the Cambrian, along the top of the back of everything. And we can either say start picking out the unconformity of the Cambrian on the Torridonian. And when we see Torridonian on Cambrian, it's a thrust contact. So there's our cross section. So, faulting up in these hills, putting Torridon group rocks against the Cambrian, or what we now call the Cambrian quartz sandstones. Well, it's pretty easy picking out these dramatic thrust structures from the alternations of the Torridon group rocks and the 
Cambrian quartz sandstones and we could see other thrust structures in the adjacent hillsides as well. Thrust vaulting has stacked up the strata, creating the stripy map pattern. We call these imbricate thrusts and they bulged up the overlying, now eroded thrust sheets to form a dome, the Achnashelic culmination. To get an idea of the scale of these structures, we can traverse into the hills. So this is one of the old access paths into the Achnashelic culmination. Let's see what we can find up here. So down here in the valley bottom, it looks like we've got quite a lot of brown sandstones, which are the Torridon group rocks. But if you look up on the ridge up here behind me, up there on the skyline, we can see that there's white rocks coming down from the ridge line. Well, those are the Cambrian quartz sandstones. Let's go up a little bit further and see what we can see. So this is uh, Cori Fonarek uh, Bothy, a staging post for our tour up the valley. No time to stop, let's get going. So we've got brown Torridon group rocks here in the foreground and the white cliff line there are the Cambrian quartz sandstones. But what's that up on the flatter bit of the ridge on top? Well, it's the brown Torridon group sandstones again. And if you look up towards the summit, you can see a strip of white Cambrian quartz sandstones again before the very summit itself is the Torridon group rocks. So, Interlayered Torridon and Cambrian strata. There's an unconformity of the Cambrian strata on the Torridonian, but then a thrust that re repeats the Torridon group rocks onto the Cambrian rocks, and again higher on the mountain. So thrust repetitions of these two distinct rock types. This is the ridge that Nickel drew his cross section through. We can show all this structure on a cross section drawn along the ridge line and extending out to the west. Imbrication, that's repetition with thrust climbing up from the Torridon group rocks and carrying them onto the younger Cambrian quartzites. Well, one of the finest viewpoints for seeing the scale and continuity of thrusts in the Atnashelic area is to walk up Ben Damp from Torridon. The path leads up through pine forests, out onto the open moorland. Another sunny day in Torridon. climbing up through Torridon sandstones, with the summit ridge capped by white quartz sandstones, the Cambrian quartzite.
it's one of the best viewpoints for seeing all the hills in the region and the geological structure. So probably the finest examples of imbricate thrusting anywhere. Really clear with the alternations of those brown Torridonian sandstones and the younger Cambrian white quartz aronites. Standing out really obviously here. The Achenshell at culmination 